Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Workman. Uh, this is going to be your screencast session one for basic chemistry, which is the second unit of study at uh, Donnersburg South for Biology 400. Um, in this particular session, what I'm going to focus on is matter and um, how matter is made up of what we call atoms. And I'm going to discuss with you what atoms themselves are made up of. Those are subatomic particles. And we're going to talk about different types of atoms and how we can determine what different types of atoms are. And those are called elements. And we're going to have a brief discussion here about what the periodic table of elements is. And then a little bit about what we call isotopes. So <clears throat> the first thing that you need to understand um, is that all living things uh, are made up of what we call matter. Um, you know, chemistry can really be thought of as the study of anything that is. If it exists, if it is, it is made up of uh, chemicals, or therefore atoms, or compounds of atoms. Um, now, it's a very common misconception that living things aren't made up of matter and aren't made up of atoms and subatomic particles, but in fact, we are uh, living things uh, all made up of matter and atoms. Um, so uh, the reason for this, of course, is that matter is anything that takes up mass, excuse me, takes up space or has mass. And all matter is made up of atoms, and of course, atoms are the basic building blocks of all matter, including living matter. Now, when we look at the structure of atoms, there are things that we're going to learn about, and they're here in this diagram. Now, this is a very simple and rudimentary diagram of a carbon atom. This might be thought of as a Bohr model, named after Niels Bohr, who was one of the scientists who came up with this idea of uh, the structure of atoms. Elements found on the periodic table, of course, uh, are substances that are just made up of one kind of atom. And what separates one kind of atom from another kind of atom is going to be discussed later in this session. There are about 100 known elements at, uh, today. Um, elements that have atomic numbers 92 and below are naturally occurring elements. Uh, atomic numbers 93 and above are what are called transuranic, and they are man-made elements. But it is these elements, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur, that are the most important in a biology class. It, and that's because these particular elements make up 97% of the mass of the compounds that are found in living things. So 97% of you, essentially, are, you know, it's these elements or these types of atoms. And if you want to remember what the six most important elements are, you can just remember chnops. If you can remember chnops, then you've got the um, six most important elements, because that is an acronym for the six symbols of those particular elements. It's interesting to note that elements, no matter w from where they originate, whether they originate from Mars or the Moon or meteorites that land on the surface of the Earth, um, all elements are the same type, or they are the same no matter where they come from. So iron on Mars is the same thing as iron on the Earth. And what this tells us is that you know the universe, it, it probably at large, is made up of these elemental atom uh, structures as well. Um, now if we look at the periodic table of elements, the periodic table of elements is basically arrayed in that um, the, s the lightest elements are near the top and the heavier elements are at the bottom of the periodic table, although there's this couple little rows here uh, that are taken out of the middle of the periodic table. Um, <coughs> it, it, what the periodic table tells us is that it describes all the different types of known elements that is, all the different kinds of atoms that are known to exist. So what does the periodic table mean? How do we understand what's on it? Well, what you've got to do is look at each individual box on the periodic table. And if you look at the numbers and the information in those boxes, you can infer or interpret uh, a lot uh, from the information on the periodic table. You can really figure out the structure of different types of atoms if you know what you're looking for. So very roughly here, and you've probably all seen this before, but Numbers on the top of each box, we call that the atomic number. The letters in the middle of the box, those are the symbols. And it's important to note that um, the symbols are either single capital letters or you've got a capital letter combined with a lowercase letter. And the number at the bottom is usually the atomic mass. And that number usually represents what we call an average atomic mass. <clears throat> so what does that mean? What does atomic number mean? What does the symbol mean? What's the atomic mass mean? Well, first of all, let's talk about the atomic number. The atomic number is going to tell you a couple of things usually. Usually it's going to let you know what the number of electrons are, and it's going to let you know what the number of protons are in a particular atom uh, or elemental atom. Now, um, this letter, of course, is a symbol, um, and you might think of it as an abbreviation, but some of the symbols are not... Um, the first letter in the name of the element. So it's not always an abbreviation. It's more proper to think about it as a symbol. 
In atomic mass, that's how heavy the element is, and it's really the sum of the total number of protons and neutrons that are found in the atom. So how do we figure this out? Well, if you think back about that last picture, this gives you information about what we call hydrogen. And this one tells me I've got one proton and one electron. And there it is. And this is how we draw a really simple rudimentary diagram of an atom. This is a hydrogen atom. All a hydrogen atom really is is one proton that has one electron orbiting about that proton. The only thing that's in the nucleus, which is the center part of the atom, is, the, is a proton in a hydrogen atom. And it's got one electron if it's a hydrogen atom. Now, if it's a hydrogen ion, that's different. So let's talk a little bit about these subatomic particles that can and do exist in um, atoms. So these are our three. We have got protons and neutrons and electrons. Protons are um, subatomic particles that have a positive charge. They're found in the nucleus of an atom. They are said to have a mass of one atomic mass unit. And it is the number of protons that determines the identity of an element. That's important to know. Neutrons are neutral subatomic particles. Neutrons have zero charge. They don't have a charge at all. They are also found in the nucleus, and they also have a mass of one atomic mass unit. And it seems to be the responsibility of neutrons to keep the nucleus stable. If you have the right number of neutrons and protons together, it seems to make, a, make for a stable nucleus. And if you have odd numbers or sort of varying numbers of neutrons in the nucleus, sometimes the nucleus of an atom can remain uh, or can be unstable, which can make it radioactive, but more on that later. Electrons, of course, are uh, subatomic particles that have a negative charge. They do not uh, exist in the nucleus. Rather, they orbit around the nucleus in what we call electron clouds, or maybe you've heard levels, or sometimes just orbitals um, that surround the outer periphery of an atom. Their mass is one two thousandth, roughly one two thousandth of the mass of a proton or a neutron. They're very, very tiny in terms of mass compared to protons and neutrons. But they're very important on how one type of atom may interact or react or combine with another type of atom or the same type of atom, which is potential. So let's go over this really quickly. Um, the atomic number, which is, of course, the number that's found on the top of a box in a periodic table, that's going to tell you the number of protons. All right. The mass number, which is the mass, uh, the average mass number usually on the bottom of uh, a box on the periodic table, that's going to tell you the total number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So if you add up the protons plus neutrons, you're going to get close to a number that is on the bottom of the periodic table. Now, a typical um, carbon atom is going to have six protons and six neutrons, which is why the mass is pretty close to 12 here. Now, the reason why it's not exactly 12 is because there are some heavier types of carbon that have higher numbers of neutrons, which brings the average up above 12. More on that later. If you're trying to figure out the number of neutrons an atom might have, what you do is you take the mass number and you subtract the atomic number. And that's going to give you the number of neutrons. Uh, it is a very common misconception to think that the number of protons is always equal to the number of neutrons. And that is uh, not the case all the time. So don't think that those numbers are going to be equal. Now, what's the difference between an atom and an ion? Well, an atom is when you have um, a situation where the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. An ion is a situation wherein you have uh, a situation where the electron number, the, or the number of electrons, is not equal to the number of protons. More on that later because there are things called negative ions, which we'll call anions, and cations, which, we, uh, which are known as positive ions, and we need to make sure we understand why you'd have a negative ion versus a positive ion. <clears throat> so here, for example, is an example th uh, of chlorine as an atom. It's got 17 protons. Now, if you go and find uh, chlorine on the periodic table, you'll see that its atomic number is 17. A typical chlorine atom would have 18 neutrons. Now, if you go and find the periodic table and look on the periodic table and you find chlorine, 17 plus 18 is 35. But you'll note that the atomic mass for chlorine, which is an average, is not exactly 35. But let's put that aside for right now. What I want you to focus on here is the total number of electrons in this particular atom of chlorine. As you can see, there's two electrons in what we call the first level or the first orbital. There's eight electrons in the second level or the second orbital. And there are seven electrons in 
the third or the final orbital in this particular case for chlorine. And if you add that up to 8 and 7, that adds up to 17. And so the situation is we have 17 protons and 17 electrons. Protons have positive charge, electrons have negative charge, and what happens is the charges of those two different types of particles neutralize one another, and you have an atom as a result. If you look at this diagram in contrast, what we have is a situation where there's one more electron here. Um, so rather than two electrons in the first level and eight electrons in the second level and eight electron or seven electrons in the third level, now we have eight electrons in the third level. This would be a situation where there's 18 electrons and 17 uh, protons. And what this results in is a negative chlor chloride ion. Now, um, an interesting thing sometimes that we do in chemistry is change the suffixes or the endings of ele element names when they turn from atoms into ions. And this is a particular example. Chlorine is an atom and chloride is a negative ion. Now we're going to do a lot of practice in class in drawing these different types of atoms and ions. So if you're not getting this exactly 100% right now, don't worry about it. We will reinforce this in class. So let's look at this, <clears throat> a little bit of review. Um, atomic number is going to tell you the number of protons, and it's going to also tell you the number of electrons, but again, that statement is only true if we're discussing an atom and not an ion. This, of course, is the symbol, and that's a capital letter, and this, of course, is an average atomic mass. Now, if we look here at, at hydrogen, hydrogen would have one proton and zero neutrons, and as an atom, one electron. Oxygen would have eight protons, probably eight neutrons, because this number is really close to 16. Eight plus eight is 16. And as an atom, it would have eight electrons. <coughs> Nitrogen would have seven protons, and it would have seven neutrons, because the average atomic mass is close to 14. Seven plus seven is 14. Uh, and as an, as an atom, it would also have seven electrons. Isotopes are when you have atoms of the same type, so you've got the same number of protons, but the number of neutrons may differ. So here's a couple of examples. Carbon-12 is a carbon atom that has six protons and six neutrons, whereas carbon-14, and of course this 14 right here is the total mass number, carbon-14 has eight neutrons rather than six. Now this sort of different number of neutrons can make the uh, nucleus of these atoms be st unstable, and so they can decay radioactively. And this can be determined, uh, this can be helpful because radioactive decay can be used as medical tracers. It can be used um, for uh, aging fossils or rocks that fossils may be occurring in. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about these isotopes and why they're uh, influencing uh, average atomic masses in class, of course. So that's the end of screencast session one. Hope you learned something. We'll see you next time.